at deserve we have the unique privilege as a team to serve wealth creators like yourselves and who knows better than wealth creators that knowledge is the new currency today uh, decipher by deserve is an effort to circulate that currency share more of that with each other and learn from each other uh, and you know when we were thinking of conceptualizing this event the question was that who should be the first person who will kick this event off and we couldn't think of anyone better than uh, nilesh bhai shah who as you all know is managing director at kotak asset management but also importantly he is at the forefront of a lot of policy and regulation that you see being shaped in india both in capital markets in government and in economy uh, he has the unique privilege and for that we thank him to serve as one of the members of the prime minister's economic advisory council and from that vantage point we believe that there are a lot of interesting insights that he will be able to bring to us in the run up to this event we were actually thinking about how markets have done typically in election years and the interesting thing about that is that there is really no insight there there are times when markets have run up ahead of elections there are times when they've corrected post elections so today is an important way for us to figure out how we perceive the markets in the time ahead in this discussion today uh, nilesh bhai will walk us through a short presentation uh, which covers his thoughts on markets economy india and where we stand in the global sphere followed by a discussion that we will have on stage with questions from yourselves about uh, what he thinks about markets joining that discussion will be my co-founder webhav who all of you know as the chief investment officer at reserve we really look forward to what's coming up uh, please don't hesitate to ask any questions we are also learning along the way thank you so much for joining us and i'll see you soon again hi very good evening to all of you at uh, 22000 nifty it's very difficult to stand on the stage audience has made more money and you are always worried someone will stand up and say nilesh bhai sit down i have made more money than you uh, can i have the slider for the presentation as sandeep mentioned we are all students of the market every day market keeps on teaching us new thing so let me start with a very simple question do you believe there is a god upstairs well most of us will believe but sometimes we are ashamed of saying it do you believe the god upstairs is an indian let me prove it to you yes it looks like when you people voted we were worried about continuity of government now we are thinking about ab ki bar 400 par fed was thinking of raising interest rates now they are also talking about cutting interest rates in a confused manner oil based on israel hamas war production cut by saudi and russia red sea disruption should be in triple digit bhagwan said tathastu and oil is in double digit growth we were at 6% at the beginning of the year now we are talking about 8% and it is so high that even today when rating agencies are revising their growth projection they are still not able to let go 6% handle we are already in march 
almost the entire year is over and you are still stuck at 6 and we are at 8% growth vote on account everyone thought it will be freebies and budget speech election speech it came as a positive surprise and good news for all of you this year monsoon is likely to be normal not like last time below normal now all these things only god could have done apna to isme koi effort nahi hai more importantly god also knows that we are indian we can play well in 10 matches and in final so god is doing birbal ki kahani with us when akbar asked birbal to make a line bigger without touching it he drew a line below which was small automatically the line above started looking bigger now god is doing exactly that thing with us our line is looking good but god is going and spoiling other people's line for example russia went into ukraine line hi khatam ho gaya china is talking about taiwan they will also go russia way south africa is trying to commit social stress and suicide brazil has communist government net net all our peers are scoring self goals when we are scoring goals this again is possible by god but all of you are not convinced so i'll present my last argument you have heard panchtantra ki katha about two billi and a bandar uh, two billis get one roti and then bandar eats it in geopolitics we were normally the billi for example we were buying oil from iran iran is our closest neighbor who can supply oil logistics cost was very low they were selling to us in rupee they were giving us six month credit 15 years back they were putting that money in yuko bank not today's yuko bank 15 years back yuko bank and those rupees were utilized to purchase things from us and you know when people trade with indians what do we do with them isse achhi roti apne ko kahan milti and then american monkey came and said sorry we are putting sanctions on iran we said sure please take my roti we'll go and import oil in dollar without any credit i'll pay higher price but i'll honor your sanction now we have transited to become panchtantra ka monkey this time when us put sanction on russia we said sorry will buy oil wherever it is available and wherever it is convenient to us we took russian billis roti cheaper oil on credit in rupee also then we went to america and said we want to manufacture fighter jets can you give your engine technology and if not you i'll go to france american monkey all american monkey has become billy and gave us their roti now this transition from billy to monkey can only be done by god now all of you are convinced that indian god is there upstairs looking after us thank you on a serious note if we look at global economy fed has done an amazing job they have brought down inflation by raising interest rate at sharpest pace and they have ensured that growth doesn't go into recession history will be far more kinder to jeremy powell the fed chairman but every medicine has a side effect the good work of fed also has side effect what are those side effect one american interest burden is rising very very fast it is going to cross trillion dollar at today's run rate second in india especially in tech industry i am told people do multiple jobs but in us that was not the case today almost half a million americans are doing two jobs in order to manage their livelihood it's higher than 2008 subprime crisis the mighty america also has an underbelly 
I stay with my mother and uh, I presume it is because of love and also my mother is not praying to God ki kab mera ladka bada aur ghar chhod ke bahar nikle but in US kids normally go out and stay on their own today they are becoming like me and staying with their parents it's not out of love always it is also majburi because house prices have become very unaffordable in whole of india including states like bihar jharkhand you won't find this kind of shop where products are not away not shown just the pictures are shown this is from the capital of america washington dc because of shoplifting they are only putting the pictures once you make the payment they'll go to the strong room and deliver products and these are not diamonds and jewelries these are all simple ordinary products now when you don't display product there is a downside to your sales and then you know some one suggests that you go to an indian they know they are very good in jugad so this is the indian jugad solution they advise the shopkeeper to increase prices to 951 dollars for everything now if someone tries doing shoplifting you can shoot them you can catch them and person can buy the product come to the counter and you can give the discount and sell it at 1 dollar or 2 dollar this is the kind of situation in mighty us which is one of the largest economy in the world where there is an underbelly which is suffering where is the real challenge america has printed too many dollars for its comfort this red portion is the debt and that needs to be serviced and you'll have to really stretch your eyes to find light blue color there at the top from that excess of income over expenditure they have to fill this big khadda how much time it will take no doubt american parents are telling their kids beta ye khadda aapko hi bharna hai do we care what happens to us debt of course not but we are interested in knowing what will fed do with the rates normally interest rate goes up like escalator one step at a time they come down by elevator with a speed but unfortunately for everyone this time the lifts button is in fed's hand they will decide when to come down by elevator as of today market believes it should happen by somewhere around mid 24 we think it is more likely to happen towards and 24 markets will readjust their expectations normally when us cuts interest rates their equity market corrects within 4 to 6 months people start believing that oh fed is cutting rates means economy is not doing well let's sell our stocks and markets correct will this time the same thing happen well there is one thing standing between fed and market correction which is money market balance of americans that's about 8 trillion dollar if they shift this money to equity correction may not happen if they keep money in money market then we may witness correction somewhere 6 months between 4 to 6 months after the fed rate hike what do we want to learn out of this entire thing what will global investors do will they buy sasta or a cheap market or will they buy sundar or performing market if people want to buy sundar cheese or a performing market india is the place every year it is delivered positive return despite correction it is trading at all time high level but there is a price to buy sundar cheese we are expensive if investors wants to go to buy sasta cheese cheap thing there is a whole range available you can buy china at 
one third valuation of India. You can buy Russia at one eighth valuation of India. But mind you, in China for last three decades, investors have made no return. In Russia, people haven't made money for last almost 17 years. If you are an investor, where will you put your money? Sasti Cheech or Sundar Cheech? Our feeling is that a lot will depend upon whether China, Russia, Brazil kind of Sasta market stops scoring self goal and they correct themselves. We have to pray to God that they should continue to make self goals so that our line continues to look bigger and we can continue to get higher valuation. On the local economy side, we are truly oasis in the desert. Is the growth real? Or is it just media management? If you see two lines over here, the down below line is sub-Saharan Africa countries GDP. Between 2004 to 2014, our GDP was growing in tandem with sub-Saharan Africa countries. But from 2014 to 24, we have started widening the gap. Undoubtedly, we are growing from 10th largest economy, we have become 5th largest economy. Today, our states are becoming as big as yesterday's India state from where I come, Maharashtra, our GDP is as high as whole of India's GDP, including Maharashtra, in 2005. It took 17 years for Maharashtra to reach where yesterday India was. And we are not alone. UP Uttarakhand today are equivalent to 2001 India. Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Karnataka are equivalent to 2000 India. If all of us continue to work as hard as last 20 years, in next 20 years, this six states will, will create five times today's India. UP is already talking about trillion dollar GDP. Maharashtra is talking about trillion dollar GDP. And very soon, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Gujarat will also start talking about trillion dollar GDP. And Gujarat may have a head start because of wedding in Jamnagar. And that was in lighter wind, don't hold, to, hold me to it. On an incremental basis, we were contributing to 2.5% of global GDP. So we were like a coach to the global growth train. If China, America, European Union moves, we'll also move. Now, we have become almost high single-digit contributor to global growth. Along with China and America, we have become the engine of the global growth train. Now, rest of the country's analysts will write, oh, if India grows, the world will grow. Why is this fast growth coming? A couple of things. Pre-90s, our talent used to migrate abroad for better opportunities. Satya Nadella went abroad, so he is running Microsoft. But if the same Satya would have stayed in India, maybe he would have created a mini Microsoft in India. Today, talent is staying back. Many are still going abroad, but many are staying back. Second, Earlier, your parents' capital was your capital to do business. Today, you can go to private equity venture capital market and raise money. So talent with a business idea can get a capital. Talent and capital has got another combination of infrastructure. Mathematically, 67 equal to 10 is wrong. But all of us are living that Example that equation in our life in infrastructure buildup. Infrastructure which we had before 2013 
is almost getting built between 14 to 24. Coal mining will go from 600 million tons to a billion ton. In next two, two and a half years, it should be 1.2 billion tons. Power 223 to 435. Power production from 970 to 1624 billion units. Diesel or electrification of railway 21,000 to 58,000 kilometers. Today, India has lesser number of diesel trains than United States of America. Highways 82,000 kilometers to 165,000 kilometers. Airport 70 to almost 150. Metro 250 to 850. Port 1400 to 2800 million metric tons. Talent, infrastructure and capital this combination is creating better growth for India and it's likely to sustain in the days to come. Where are the challenges for India? We have multiple challenges. We are still a poor developing country. We are not like America, a rich country. Our first problem is power shortages. For last 7-8 years, we had reduced power shortages to an insignificant amount. But power demand has gone up at a rapid pace and our power plants are running at almost peak capacity. It's quite likely that this summer India may witness power shortages unless until some divine intervention happens. Our second challenge is consumption unevenness. Urban India is consuming much faster than rural India. The premium products are selling much faster than mass market product. The top end of pyramid is benefiting more from growth than bottom end of the pyramid. Which is why we have to give 80 crore Indians free food. Which is why government has to spend so much money on subsidies. Should you give a man fish? Or should you teach them fishing so that they can become independent? We are today lagging in terms of creating enough jobs and opportunities for our bottom of the pyramid people. The government is playing its role by building infrastructure and hoping that on this infrastructure build up, jobs and opportunities will be created. Can we take India's growth for granted and say that we'll become 5-6 times in 5-6 states in next two decades? Answer is no. We'll have to continue to push reforms. Our judicial infrastructure needs improvement. Our bureaucracy has to align with time. There are so many things which still have to accomplish. On geopolitical stage, we have to remain Panchatantra's monkey and not become Panchatantra's Billy. Our election should be fought on work done rather than freebies. And most importantly, we have to master the disruption coming through technology. We missed out on industrial revolution. From about 25% of global GDP, we became half and 1% of global GDP. We captured IT revolution to some extent and climbed back up today to 3.6% of global GDP. But this AI machine learning disruption which is coming, if we don't master, will probably go further down. Is there a hope for India on, my, on technological disruption? We think there is hope what I'm pointing out is exceptions and not the rule. But there are some candles which is trying to dispel darkness. We have invested in an explosive company in Nagpur. Today they make explosives which only have light and no sound. You can use explosives in eco-sensitive places. They are making such good quality explosives that it is getting exported to Sweden home country of Dr. Alfred Nobel, who invented explosives. 
in Bangalore, we have invested in an auto component company, engineering company. They recently got a contract from Toyota for making engine spare part. They are the first company in the entire world which supply various components to Toyota who is given that owner. Till today, Toyota made all engine spare parts in their company, in their factory. Now, they have found a Bangalore-based engineering company worth to give that outsourcing. There's another company whose IPO has recently come, so it's not a large company. They supply metal parts to Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi wanted to mix next generation turbine and they wanted particular fineness in a metal part. Out of their thousand vendor, only one company delivered that desired fineness, which is this company. No other company has yet delivered that fineness. Finally, there's a CNC machine maker from Rajkot, which recently came out with an IPO. The owner, promoter, manager is not even an engineer. And he makes CNC machine, which Apple finds acceptable quality to manufacture iPhone. Their Hosur factory has CNC machines from this company. And they buy not only because quality is good, but they are 40% cheaper than Chinese competitors. These are all the exceptions which gives us confidence that India will ride technology wave. It will not get disrupted. In fact, it will create disruption for others. Now, converting this into market, well, the market cap to GDP ratio is a red signal. It is nearly at all time high. In the past, our historical average is about 80% and we are trading 50% higher. Is it unusual? Is it a red signal? Well, not necessarily because our profit growth is also running at a higher level. Average large caps are trading at about 12% premium to historical average, mid cap at about 14% and small cap at about 39%. Undoubtedly, small caps are trading relatively at a higher valuation than historical averages. As I men mentioned, our market cap to GDP ratio is at all time high level because even our profit to GDP ratio is nearly at all time high level. In 2008, we were in six and a half percent bend, but that was an exceptional year. Otherwise, about 5% profit to GDP ratio is a good enough number. So earnings are good, hence valuations are higher. We believe Nifty will touch about 1150 rounded off for FY25 next year. And Nifty 500 will be about 900 rupee. Our markets in large and mid are fairly priced. Small caps are a little bit expensive. Now the real question is, Nilesh, bhai, ye sab gyan chodo, ye bolo kal market upar jayega ya niche aayega? Paisa lagaye ya nahi lagaye? Right, Sandeep bhai, that is what you want to hear. So, this dilemma is faced daily by me and by so many others. And I have found one perfect solution for it. I used it in college days. She loves me, she loves me not. And I picked a perfect wife for me. She has tolerated me for 25 years. So, this solution works. Don't ask my wife about it. Let me give you some examples. Whenever large cap is about 80% plus of total market cap, then small and mid caps deliver better return. It happened in 2003, it happened in 2009. Consequently, when small and mid cap becomes 30% plus of the market, they deliver lower return. Right now, small and mid caps are 37% of the total market cap. 
So likely that small and mid caps now will deliver lower return, large cap will deliver better return. But as I mentioned, earnings growth in small cap is faster. Large caps are growing at about 24%, small caps are growing at about 48%. Earnings growth is higher, so small cap should deliver better return and large cap will deliver lower return. In the election year, governments print money, political parties spend money, consumers when they receive money from government and political parties, they go out and spend money and hence market does well. This is true for India, this is true for other countries also. This is election year, so market should do well. In the leap year, generally Indian markets do badly. This is leap year, so market will do badly. Whenever foreigners come to sell, our markets don't do as well. In March 20, they sold aggressively, markets corrected. In October 21, they were selling conservatively, markets stagnated. This year, foreigners have been selling in the month of October, November, January, February, but buyer in December and March. As of today, many sovereign funds are underweight India. So they are unlikely to sell India because they don't have sufficient stock. Generally, when US interest rates are cut, market starts correcting in emerging market, including India. This year, Fed is expected to cut rate, hence market should correct. But it may not happen because all of you are giving us so much money on systematic investment plan. We are sitting with 4 lakh crore waiting for FPIs to sell. Net net, please trust, God is Indian. This dilemma will come either way, katega market ya upar jayega. But Ultimately, God will take care of us. There are few things which even God can't explain. You don't try to understand them. For example, when our PSU market cap was about 15 lakh crore, deficit was about 4, 4.5%, our divestment target was 65,000 crore. Now, PSU market cap is 50 lakh crore, Deficit is about 6%, but divestment target has become 50,000 crore. Shouldn't we sell more when prices are higher? I think government is also behaving like us. We buy more when prices are high and we ran away when prices are low. IRFC is a great company. It's owned by government of India and so is HDFC Bank. But IRFC today trades at double the valuation of HDFC Bank. IRFC today trades at double the valuation of HDFC Bank. IRFC employs 40 employees and their market cap is 2 lakh crore. Per employee market cap is 5,000 crore. How many of you will value a government employee at 5,000 crore? Bhel is a great company. So is LNT. Bhel delivered a result this December where salaries and wages are more than the sales or turnover. The salaries and wages are more than the turnover of the company and they incurred loss. The school where I studied, I was told that in such companies, prices will correct. To prove me wrong, bail went up by 12% next day. Now, I can't go to my principal and seek refund of my fees. What he taught was absolutely wrong. Bail is proving it. Bail today trades at seven times valuation of LNT. How many of you have bank account in Indian Overseas Bank? One and two. I also have account there. How many of you will have account in Excess Bank? Uh, far more people. 
शुड आई ओ बी ट्रेड एट डबल द वैल्यूएशन ऑफ एक्सिस बैंक भाई हम दोनों पे ही आई ओ बी चल रहा है संभाल लेना हाँ मतलब मेरे नाम पे ही शायद चल रहा है वाई इज दिस हैपनिंग वेल देर इज वेरी वेरी लिमिटेड फ्लोटिंग स्टॉक इन सम ऑफ दिस नेम्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ इंडिया और आई ओ बी नाइंटी सिक्स पॉइंट फोर परसेंट ऑफ शेयर ऑफ आई ओ बी इज ओन बाई प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया शी डजेंट ट्रेड इन द मार्केट थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स इज पब्लिक फ्लोट वेर एल आई सी ऑल्सो विल हैव समथिंग कस्टमर्स लाइक अस ऑल्सो विल प्रोबेबली हैव समथिंग हु आर द सेलर्स देर आर नो सेलर्स एंड प्राइजेस कीप ऑन राइजिंग विद स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ बाइंग विल आई ओ बी बी एबल टू रेज मनी एट फोर टाइम्स प्राइज टू बुक एक्सट्रीमली अनलाइकली नो प्लीज रिमेंबर द स्कूल वेर आई स्टडीड ऑल दिस थिंग्स इज नॉट करेक्ट बट स्टिल वी बिलीव दिस लिमिटेड फ्लोटिंग स्टॉक काउंटर्स आर वन वेर वन विल हैव टू बी केयरफुल दे आर टूडे रनिंग अहेड ऑफ देयर फंडामेंटल्स एंड दे आर पुटिंग इनॉर्मियस बर्डन ऑन दिस कंपनी टू डिलीवर most will fail to deliver and hence this prices are unsustainable frankly speaking as various research has suggested it is difficult to figure out which way markets will go election year leap year fpi selling domestic buying us interest rates being cut versus so many factors will continue to impact our market in this market try to invest for longer term as of today we believe if you are investing in small cap beyond your risk appetite then please exercise some caution especially in those low floating stock counters mid cap are little premium to historical average you can invest you can hold on to your position as long as it is within your risk appetite large cap looks like a green signal valuations are fair overall this is the market where you will invest according to your risk appetite and investment goal you won't leverage into the market it's not recommended to become extreme overweight into the market at this valuation on the fixed income ultimately us will cut interest rates their gdp is seven times higher than india their credit card debt is 40 times higher than india The student loan is 90 times higher than India. हमारे यहाँ पे हम housing loan लेते हैं, जल्दी चुका देते हैं. वहाँ पे student loan, parent will have to hand it over to the kids. बेटा हमारी student loan भर देना. There is also debt FPI flows coming to Indian market. day before yesterday city bank ceo made a observation that she expects about 40 50 billion dollar to come to indian debt market this is time to go and buy longest possible maturity 30 years 40 years 50 years we are unlikely to see this big figure interest rates in the medium term gold is shining it's hitting all time high this is because central banks of the world has become as wiser as indian housewives we used to buy 700 800 tons of gold now central banks of the world for last 2 years have bought 1000 tons of gold there is a competition between china central bank governor and our housewives who will buy more in that competition obviously gold prices will remain higher gold prices also get supported when us interest rates come down we expect us interest rates to come down at the end of this year that also should support gold prices if you buy gold please remember there is 18% tax incidence in india what is worth 100 dollars in dubai singapore is worth 118 in india this encourages gold smuggling at some point of time government is likely to cut gold import duty to discourage gold smuggling 
and at that point of time rupee gold prices can come down to that extent but subject to that gold should be part of your portfolio finally if i have to summarize growth will slow down globally central banks around the world will start cutting interest rates to support growth in fixed income longest maturity should outperform as it gives scope on income plus capital appreciation due to falling interest rates gold will continue to sign subject to that 18% tax incidence large caps offer better risk return trade off compared to small and mid cap domestic focus sector should do better than global focus sector as global growth is slowing down it and chemical are two underperforming sectors maybe you will get an opportunity to enter there in this year things which you should avoid SME IPOs and stocks, low floating step counters, there might be short term pain there that you know prices will rise and you will feel I have missed an opportunity, but there will be long term gain as these prices are unlikely to sustain over a longer period of time. What should you do? You have to take a call based on your risk appetite and not. based on what's happening in market if you bought during covid period then certainly you can maintain your equity allocations now you know what is risk you can manage the risk well incremental money you can put towards large and mid cap counters and most importantly you can keep deserve as your mutual fund distributor as their advice is coming rightly if you didn't do anything in covid very good you are average risk taker please take some profit now this market is good enough for you to book profit on overweight positions incremental money you can put into large caps and next time when sandeep and vibo when others call please take their phone call if you had sold during covid and converted notional loss into real loss this is time to book large profit if you have sold at 8000 and 9000 nifty better sell at 22000 also incremental money please put via systematic investment plan or systematic transfer plan and more importantly shift to deserve sandeep bhai sambhal lena what will be the best way to invest this is all in lighter vein what is the best way to invest i think the best way to invest is this patek philip advertising they say you never actually own patek philip you merely pass it on to next generation india has its challenges but compared to others we are in a much more comfortable position will we become developed nation by 2047 higher probability you can never say anything with certainty but higher probability this is what we should be passing on to our next generation as india becomes multiple times today's size its market cap will also follow and hence it is time to remain invested for the next generation ups and downs honge market upar jayega niche aayega but eventually investing in good quality companies for longer term will create as much return as they have created in the past thank you we are just setting up the stage nilesh bhai while we are bringing this up uh and you know this is a closed door nobody is recording it uh i wanted to ask you how is it to actually advise the government what has been your experience does the advice get taken is there uh, is there that openness to understand what uh, experts like yourselves are or or do you learn from 
what the government is thinking. So would love to start with that. And uh, we would love questions coming up from the audience. We're just setting up. Give us a few more minutes. So it is, it is a great responsibility and honor when Prime Minister of India thinks that you are worthy of becoming part of his council. We don't get paid anything, but we are all like that squirrel of Ramayana. So when Ram Bhagawan was building Setu to go to Lanka, there were big monkeys, big, uh, you know, bhalus and everyone. But there were small squirrels also which were taking pebbles and trying to build. And then the Vanars complained to Ram Bhagawan that the squirrels are coming in our way and they may die. And apparently Ram Bhagawan said that, look, everyone is contributing according to their capability. And he put his hand on squirrels and that's why they have five stripes. So Mr. Modi is trying to build a Ram Setu. He has many able-bodied people to support. We are small squirrels. We are contributing to our capability. Many people may have impression that it's difficult to criticize Prime Minister. We have been giving both positive and negative feedback and for two terms I have continued in my job. So it's an absolute honor to share market feedback. If we are persistent, if we give right data, then many of our proposals does get accommodated. We also learn from them a lot and uh, it's a great experience working with the government, you realize their side, how much burden they are taking, how much effort they are putting in. Undoubtedly, a government minister or a government employee carries far higher load than a private sector employee. And many of them are rewarded far less than a private sector employee. Nishmai, please join us on stage. Uh, we would love to have you on the stage as well. Uh, we are open for questions. Uh, Please don't hesitate to put your hand up and uh, we'll have the mic come across uh, to you. Uh, Nishmai, while we are getting the questions up, I think one big debate and in our lifetime, this is, we are seeing it in a, in a big way. A lot of clients have a large amount of direct equity exposure uh, today, more than what we have seen at least in the last seven, eight years. The second is a lot of exposure is happening to direct equity PMSs, uh, alternative investment funds. Uh, how would you think about that balance versus mutual funds? And Weber, I'll put that same question to you also shortly. So if you know about a company and invest, it's a perfect thing. But if you are following a tip and investing, by and large, you are going to get disappointed when this kind of bull run comes to an end. Between AIF, PMS, mutual fund, on the same portfolio, mutual fund will always do better than AIF and PMS because of deferment of tax. Now, AIF and PMS, in order to justify their existence, either have to give you bragging rights that mutual fund is my driver invest karta hai, but I invest in PMS. Mein invest karta or they have to take higher risk to generate higher return. So pick up those AIF and PMSs which are giving you unique solution, which is meeting your unique requirement. But if you are going to go for bragging rights, then don't expect much return. Mehrav, your view? Absolutely uh, agree with Nilesh Bhai and uh, I was thinking about this question, uh, the kind of stocks that uh, I saw in clients' portfolios in 2006-07 versus the kind of port uh, stocks that we are seeing now are very different. And most of those companies which were popular back in the days have uh, stopped operating. So I can, I can share a few names. I, I, if, if I remember correctly, Unitex market cap in 2007 was 70,000 crores. So most of these stocks were there in the client's portfolios. 
and uh, unless you understand the business unless you are able to dedicate some time to understand these businesses and understand the difference between the price and the value you should not be doing it uh, we are lucky to have uh, qualified fund managers do this job for us at a very very minimal cost so why bother with that um any questions from uh, anybody i think a gentleman here has a question Good evening, Nilay sir. It was a wonderful uh, insight, and you explained this complex topic in a very humorous manner. So kudos to your speech, sir. I was very, very impressed. So my name is Adarsh, sir. I head the South region for Nexus Malls, which went REIT recently. And uh, sir, obviously now we know that the next government most likely is going to be BJP, and for the next two terms is going to be, and the next decade belongs to India, is what everyone says. So now, if you really want that growth to happen in the next ten years. now what are the financial reforms that you think should be there to really propel that growth and when we also talk about 2047 that will reach a 30 trillion economy that entails a growth of 9.7% okay so what are those challenges and what steps is it? i mean is it just a wish list in this government or is there a road map at least that how will they look at achieving this because if we do that i think we will be in the number 2 or number 1 economy around that time i don't know how much us and china grows so so that's my so adarsh bhai whatever this government does they are putting a target so that people start walking towards it till today no one had told us that india can be 5 trillion dollar economy it was unfortunate that so many people were praying that india should not achieve that target bhai uske to koi bal bachche nahi hai hamare hai he is working for our bal bachcha and we are working against our bal bachcha same way he is saying we should become a developed nation because now we are already on our way to become third largest economy now we have to improve our per capita gdp we are third largest economy but with only 2650 dollar per capita gdp we are a very 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 poor country which is why target that in 2047 we should become a developed nation with 10 12 15 000 dollar per capita gdp now what financial reforms we need one to create growth you have to make investment and to fund investment you need savings it could be your saving my savings or foreign savings in india savings is not an issue all of us are savers by nature but when it comes to investments we are not as good 18 crore indians have gone and traded in crypto now bitcoin is at all time high price but how many of that 18 crore people are left with bitcoin 10 crore people play games to make money majority of them will lose crores of people trade in futures and option to destroy their future because 89% people don't make money 2 crore indians have invested in ponzi schemes like punjab agro tech corporation and city limousine and rose valley and sarada all those monies are gone is education an answer answer is no india's most literate state kerala spends annually on lottery more than what they have cumulatively invested in equity mutual fund if you start making money in lottery government will shut down lottery business in mutual funds people have made 10 12 15 20% return compounded for 20 25 years and yet india's most literate population spends more money in lottery than they have cumulatively invested and that prerogative was not only of kerala apne bhi itne hi guilty hai in last 3 years all of us have put 9 lakh crore in currency notes and how much mutual funds have got only 4 lakh crore i don't know how to convince people ki bhai currency notes to depreciating asset hai and mutual fund is appreciating assets with some volatility why will you put 9 lakh crore in currency notes and only 4 lakh crore in mutual funds we need to make indians better savers to better investors then 
my savings will fund my investment then foreign savings if it comes fine if it doesn't come we can still continue to grow at a faster pace if we combine domestic savings and foreign savings together to create investment we would have become more than 5 trillion dollar economy long back so we need to ensure that indian savings goes towards appropriate investments and whatever is needed for that we must do what is the biggest challenge in insurance there are 22 lakh distributors in mutual funds we are 250000 oh that's a big gap people prefer putting in cash rather than listening to vibhav or sandeep pen invest in mutual fund <laughs> we have to change the habits done thank you sir hello sir um a wonderful talk i have been listening to you on youtube and uh, listening to many podcasts uh, of you thank you vibhav uh, sandeep and the entire team of deserve for organizing this so uh, i'm like uh, during during your presentation i figured out like you are quite bullish on indian markets and in indian economy so two risks or caveats i just wanted to bring one which you have mentioned and one which you have not mentioned the one is like about uh, job creation lack of job creation so i recently read a data uh, in which it's mentioned that 1.2 crore uh, people join labor force every year and and i was surprised that i'm from it sector i work for a company called broadcom so i was surprised that uh, despite 40 years of presence of it in india the total cumulative people who are employed in it is close to 50 lakhs and these are like for for the average man to move from lower middle class to middle class this is this has been like the pathway so uh, so and and doesn't lack of job creation just encompass all the things that you mentioned other problems soft consumption or skewed consumption premium goods and services being consumed uh, the, that consumption being uh, i mean going at a higher rate and what is the and isn't this a real challenge and isn't this like so for some reason not talked about enough and second thing which you did not mention is isn't like uh, demography or the, uh, the the declining total fertility rates a problem D- doesn't do, don't we really have a challenge where we we, we may become as a, as a nation we may become poor before we uh, we may remain poor before we become old because china is close to six times of our per capita income and their population has started declining now and that's still considered as like a high middle income country or middle income country i, I mean you, you would know better and we are still like very low so isn't i mean why is this not part of conversation i mean about the declining population so both the points are absolutely valid we are today well behind china because they created more jobs we couldn't our real challenge is that 15 to 20 crore indians are employed in agriculture in an undisguised form or a small mom and pop shop then in a formal employment but how do i create that 15 20 crore jobs one is to create an industry like uh, it industry which can absorb 50 60 like well paying jobs over a period of time now global capability centers have started coming about 18 lakh people work over there domestic tourism is picking up varanasi has got more tourists than goa ayodhya will get more tourist so i'm moving domestic tourism to create alternative jobs in one example if we have to summarize samsung came to india long before they had gone to other countries they have made in india sold in india they are india's largest consumer durable company they run world's largest mobile handset manufacturing factory in agra noida yet the turnover is just about 1 lakh crore they went to vietnam much later on they make in vietnam to sell all over the world the turnover in vietnam last year was about 6 lakh crore and vietnam is 1/12th size of india when samsung came to india we should have just grabbed them and given them everything they wanted 
so that they would have made in india to sell all over world we can't afford to miss next samsung china plus one is happening companies want to come to india how do we create infrastructure how do we lay red carpet for them how do we ensure that our bureaucracy and regulators don't burden them some states are doing well some are not in iphone in toys we have done well in capturing global market long way to cover but beginning has been good in others we are not doing it one third of doctors in us are made in india more than 40% doctors in uk are made in india more than 50% of doctors in middle east are made in india now can we create healthcare industry which is as big as tech industry anyway you are consuming indian medicine 40% of medicines consumed by americans in us is made in india you get treated by indian doctors can we bring medical tourism to india where world is aging and they need cheaper treatment in cancer there is the latest technology called car t cell technology india it was launched in 3 months after it was launched in us their success rate and our success rate is similar albeit it's on a very 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 small population but the cost of car t cell treatment is 90% lower than america if i create scale it will become 95% cheaper now can we bring all the cancer patients of the world to come to india get good quality doctors good quality medicines latest treatment at a cheaper price will build another it industry where 50 lakh people will be employed and more importantly duae bhi milegi ki saste mein achhi tarah treat kiya how do we plan for this if we can do this then will become as big as china in 2047 not immediately same way about fertility rate we are still above replacement rate unlike china japan which are well below replacement rate so there is a window from here till 2047 2050 or 2040 depending upon how population shapes up where we could become rich before we become old and that is the race against the time if we don't capture opportunities like today then we will become old and not rich but if we maintain that pace and capture all this opportunities tourism global capability center healthcare industry if we can push our companies to become supplier all over the world then there is a road map to become developed india by 2047 while you were talking i was thinking about uh, there are a lot of these themes that we can play right and uh, webhav i know you have a strong view on playing via themes or thematic funds versus letting fund managers play that so webhav why don't you take that question and we are again open for questions i think uh, it's basic human nature to like stories nilesh bhai also used a lot of stories in his presentations and we like all these stories and most of the thematic investing is built around a strong narrative in my experience of last 21 years i have seen many stories playing out it started with uh, power generating companies then moved on to shipping companies then pharmaceutical companies then tech companies to nbfcs and so on the unfortunate part of that is most of these themes find consensus towards the peak performance cycle and that's why when investors invest money in these themes they end up losing disproportionate amount of money i remember this uh, first speech that i heard from a fund manager was from samira roda in 2001 where he had launched a tech fund and nav of that tech fund went down by 80% and investors were hammering him and his reaction was you gave money to me to invest in tech stocks i could not have invested in anything else and that's the biggest challenge for the fund manager also because when you're giving money to them to invest in a specific theme they can't operate outside that theme so which creates a further constraint for them i believe that we should uh, let the fund manager decide which theme they want to be overweight on and give them enough flexibility to move away from that theme if that is not working out 
yeah we have a question here hi uh, my name is amit hello nilesh sir i was just hearing that you have been suggesting that we should uh, rely more on uh, mutual funds and all the stuffs but uh, when i see the data if you see uh, okay i am not a seasoned investor but when i see mfs i understand that they have got a huge army of properly one of the best iims grads and all those stuffs and their performance should be at par but then when i see their performances especially let's say take an example a huge money parked in let's say in paytm or in nika Uh, because you also suggested that we should closely monitor all those things so what the hell they were doing before investing that is first question second question is we are also hearing that probably the next big disclosure that can shake the whole stock market may come up from mfs so uh, how do exactly as an investor how do i get uh, confidence in mfs when they are investing in those stocks which even analysts sitting at my office can tell that stay away from all those things and they are parking like ptm has got 2000 crores plus of ms money is invested in that these kind of investments are happening amit bhai have you heard about warren buffett you think he is good huh. yeah he lost money in ptm now as per your definition warren buffett is duffer idiot but you yourself said just now that no no warren buffett is god so even god can make a mistake you have to look at my overall performance if i am playing cricket i will get out on zero also and i'll score a century also but as long as i am averaging 50 runs that's good enough Two out of forty-four mutual funds have invested in PTF. Forty-two others, including Kotak Mutual Fund, didn't invest ever. But there is a WhatsApp university of people who are circulating as if every mutual fund is an investor in PTF. No one blames Warren Buffett. कि क्या गधा है इतना loss किया. But forty-two of us are carrying burden of two of us. you'll have to build your confidence by asking questions then you will get the answers today amit bhai there are so many people who will misguide you there are deep fake videos of us which are circulating there are seven telegram channels of mine which will advise you what to buy tomorrow so that it will double your money obviously you will never know who i am they have my photos they have everything we are living in a world where there is too much of noise in which takes away or which creates distraction in any fund if you want to invest either you need people like vibhav sandeep who can tell you this is right this is wrong there will be periods like right now as we speak my funds are underperforming benchmark index you can legitimately ask nilesh bhai gyan kam do kaam jyada karo but amit bhai i haven't invested in stocks which i talked about it's far better to underperform for a while then chase the momentum and create pain at a later date in our life we have gone through this cycle many a times so either you take help of a good advisor or you look at the portfolio and see are these people following a process if i come here and talk about value 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 and i have all tibre wala shares in my portfolio you should be worried about me you should not put a single naya paisa in my fund irrespective of what performance i have generated so you will build your confidence over a period of time by asking questions by tasting in then gaining the confidence uh, the gentleman there has a question uh, we're getting the mic mic across uh, nilesh bhai you have seven telegram channels deserve as a distinction of having one we filed our first fir yeah, all seven are not <laughs> you also in the same company <laughs> yes we filed our first fir against that telegram channel so <laughs> nowadays when i go to bandra police station for filing my complaint they say sir jao na how many complaints you can file uh, uh, nilesh sir hi this is arvind here 
Uh, thanks for the wonderful presentation. Really enjoyed it. My question is uh, one of the things that you probably referred to a little bit, but not so much in detail. I would love to get your view on it. Is this whole, let's say, the 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 big inequality that we see between what you call as the premium segment and the lower end, right? So everything is about a 7-8% in India. If you look at broadband penetration, if you look at stock market penetration, cars in India, income tax filers, they're all the people who are the 7-8%, all of us are sitting here, right? And, and the middle India and the lower India, we know is struggling and the consumption is slowed down, you called up on it. Manrega allocation is at an all-time high and 80 crore families are getting free food. All of that, all of that is what you mentioned. So, is, is there a concrete plan that the government is looking for to say, how do we bridge this? Because to the point somebody else asked, when we become, uh, we become aged before we become rich, and coupled with this inequality, there's a larger risk that will we run into social, you know, unrest and all of that. Is this something that the government is actively looking at? So, undoubtedly, in democracy, you have to win votes. And every government has no option but to look at the people. Now, there is a reference of Charlie Munger on Koreans. Why are Koreans outperforming us? And he says, those guys are working 84 hours a week. Their kids, when they return from school, spend four hours in learning maths and science. No wonder they are outperforming. Yahape Narayan Murthy speaks about 70 hours of work. After working 70 hours in his whole lifetime, and people who haven't done anything in their life is criticizing Narayan Murthy. Boss, apni okat to dekh. Kaha Raja Boj, kaha Gango Teli. I mean, how can you even speak against Narayan Murthy? Where is your okat? But, you know, we have to live with it. One generation of Indians will have to work really hard like Koreans. Then we can come out. Today in this audience, so many people would have worked maybe 84 hours a week and that's why they are sitting on this table. Some might be lucky, their fathers would have worked 84 hours. <laughs> or father-in-law. See, all those clappings, no. <laughs> But Arvind Bhai will have to work hard. There is no option. And uh, we have made so many errors in the past. Like Samson. Hukam ka ikka hath mein tha, paplu samaj ke feng diya. That would have created probably 30, 40 like jobs. We, we have made so many errors in that. The first steel mill in Asia was built in India. The first railway was set up in India. If I remember correctly, in 1853, when Mumbai Thana Railway came, it was a steam engine and it covered Mumbai Thana distance in 45 minutes. Why, Sandeep Bhai, now Mumbai Thana is 1 hour minute lagta hai. The world has moved forward, we have gone backward. Now, okay, there were not that many stations, but still. So, we missed opportunities in which is why we are here. And there's no option but to work hard to reduce inequality. In the 65-70 years of our independence, we were trying to divide the cake equally among people. In the process, good guys went abroad. Everyone got a small, small piece. Now we are expanding the pie of the cake. And everyone will get uneven share, but the last person also will get a better cake, bigger cake. Today food is almost given. We have eliminated hunger-related poverty. Now India is such a large country, you can find exception. But frankly speaking, try uh, finding extreme poverty. It has come down dramatically. Now we have to create jobs, well-paying jobs. We have to create another IT industry. We have to create another generic pharma industry. We are sending more people abroad for study than students who come here to study. About 12 lakh Indians study abroad. Why not bring Harvard and Oxford here? 
one and a half crore Indians travel abroad. Why not get one and a half crore foreigners to travel in India? If we do capture those opportunities, then inequality will reduce. Will there be social unrest? Likely, but finally we are all karma theory. Abhi aap log ko water shortage hai, but you don't protest ki lake kyon band kar di hai? Paan pe kyon construction kiya? You accepted your fate that as Bangalorean I am supposed to live with lower water. So same thing, no protest. Nilesh Bhai's mother has just told me to make sure he catches his flight. So I have time for one more question. Uh, okay. The gentleman there. Uh, I'm Mr. Nilesh. Uh, I have a question in terms of our uh, Indian economy moving in the right direction. And there's a lot of untapping taking place with the government of India ex excelling in many areas, right? But I still see the manufacturing sector, there's still a lot of untapping taking to take place, right? Uh, we saw a lot of uh, German-made cars getting engine manufacturing components from India coming out. Uh, do you see more opportunities coming out where manufacturing hubs can become more in India as, a, as against China? And where do you think you are able to influence the government of India to ease policies so that the the time to start a full manufacturing ecosystem can be shortened and people can start getting benefits on that on a longer term basis. So very good question. And I first mentioned, I'm not the monkey who is scaling, who is carrying boulders. I'm the squirrel who is carrying pebbles. There are much more capable people building policies. I'm only putting small pebbles. Where are we lacking in manufacturing? Multiple things, but two main things. One, power cost. Other, logistics cost. Power costs are high because agriculture power is free. And theft and decoity loss is also very high, which is loaded into industrial power. Logistics costs are high because passenger fares are not revised for last two decades. The last railway minister who dared to revise passenger fares, uska nokri chala gaya. His own party sake him as a railway minister for revising passenger fares. So entire subsidy is loaded into commercial freight. Between commercial freight and industrial power, we are uncompetitive by 8% or 10%. On top of it, infrastructure constraints, bureaucracy, regulator. No wonder we are not a big force in manufacturing. But there are exceptions where our entrepreneurs have made an impact. Two-wheelers. You go to most parts of the world, you will find an Indian made two-wheelers. Small cars. We are not as dominant as two-wheelers, but I think we will become as dominant in small cars. Now, can I take this expertise into other territories? For example, in garments, Bangladesh exports three times more garments than us. Where did we go wrong? When we gave up quota saying that we are now developed country, we are a poor country, we should have get more quota. But we surrendered that for some reason. Second, we didn't allow women to work in three ships. In Bangladesh, people work 12 hour shifts twice. We work eight hours. We are uncompetitive in garment. That brings down to my thing. We have to work 84 hours in order to become garment exporter. Now, if we start exporting garments like Bangladesh, that's a three times more employment than what we have today. Automatically, jobs will be created. Manufacturing hub will be created. Now, I can't be competitive in every industry. But wherever I have an edge, can I capture it? Uh, for example, now we are going into semiconductor chips manufacturing. One in every fourth chip made in the world is designed in Bangalore. There are 230 plus global capability centers, albeit captive of global companies which are designing chips. Now if I get manufacturing capability and then I know how to use those chips, chips in consumer durables, automobiles and everything else, I suddenly create a vertical integration and then I can compete with the world. 
I think Indian entrepreneurs are creating growth story. Indian government is facilitating it. But it is the Indian entrepreneurs like Narayan Murthy, like Azim Primji, like Shiv Nadar, which are creating growth story. It's not the government growth story. If we allow our entrepreneurs freedom, take away this burden of logistics and power, give them some flexibility on bureaucracy, then I think we'll do extremely well. Is government aware of this? Answer is yes. Can they implement it? As a voter, we'll have to reassure government that if you take right economic decisions, you can still come back to power. You can take away free agriculture power, give subsidy to poor farmers, but people who are protesting in Mercedes GLC, uska to lehi lo, and we will support you. We don't go out to vote. That's where government has to persist with such things. The day we will start going to vote, the day we will assure government that good economics is good politics, I think India's growth rate will go into double digit. I have to catch a flight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. We hope uh, a new digital innovation called Digi Yatra will make sure you get there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone for sharing your time with us. Uh, you know, I was looking at our numbers a year ago. We were managing 1500 crores. Today we manage 6000 crores in about a year's time. Thanks to you for all the support and thanks for sharing your time with us today. We hope to see you at dinner and the bar is open. We'll catch up on the sidelines. Thank you.